Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, today I am going to dive into the world of cryptocurrency mining. Specifically, uh, I'm going to explore how to mine Monero. XMR is the ticker symbol and why it's considered easier than mining Bitcoin. So what is Monero? Monero is a privacy focused cryptocurrency that offers secure, private, untraceable transactions. So, so why would we choose to mine Monero over something like uh, Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies. Well, there's a couple different reasons. Number one, privacy. Monero um, uses advanced cryptographic techniques to ensure transaction privacy. It's also easier than uh, mining Bitcoin. So from a hardware requirement standpoint, it can be efficiently mined using regular CPUs or GPUs, whereas Bitcoin requires specialized and super expensive ASIC hardware. Uh, also from an energy consumption standpoint, it's less energy intensive compared to Bitcoin and um, Monero's uh, ASIC resistant algorithm ensures a more level playing field. So it allows more people to participate in the mining process without needing high-end costly equipment. So here's the items that we'll need and that I'm using in this video and I'll put the links to all of these below. Uh, first thing you'll need is a Raspberry Pi. This can be a Raspberry Pi 4 like this one. This is a Model B. It has 8 gigs of RAM, a 64-bit quad-core processor. Uh, and that is that is a requirement. We'll need 64-bit, um, and then uh, you could use a Raspberry Pi 5, which is the latest as of the time of this video. But the RAM is pretty important, so you want to make sure that you have a decent amount of RAM. Um, you will need a some sort of an SD card. This is an SD adapter, so I can plug it into my computer. But here's the mini uh, SD card. Again, I'll put the link to this in the in the description. This is a 16 gigabyte. Um, card capacity but you don't necessarily need that much uh, and then the last thing that you'll need is a um, USB-C um, power supply let's get started so as you see on the screen here I have the raspberry pi uh, com web page open um, if we click on the software button you will find a link to uh, the raspberry pi imager I am using a Mac but it has links for Windows and for Ubuntu uh, I'm going to use the Mac, so I'm going to download this um, Raspberry Pi imager directly to my machine. And once that's finished, we will go ahead and um, double click on it. Now I've already installed it. You double click it and it will ins it will install onto your PC. So once you've got uh, the Raspberry Pi imager installed and um, you double click it, it will show you this, uh, this Raspberry Pi imager application will pop up on your screen. Um, at that point, you're going to want to go ahead and put in your SD card. We're going to hit choose device. You're going to select the Raspberry Pi that you have. As I mentioned, I have the Raspberry Pi 4 Model B. We're going to choose our operating system. And for this one, as I mentioned, we're going to need a 64 bit. But we don't want the full desktop, so we're going to go with the light version. So if you go to Raspberry Pi OS Other, you will see um, a bunch of different options here for 64 bit. And we're going to go with this Raspberry Pi. Um, light which has no desktop environment so this will allow us to install headless and that's the one we want so a little bit less overhead click on that and then we're going to choose our storage and so we've got uh, this is my Apple SD card reader that I put in I'm going to use that once you get to this screen we are going to edit the settings here we want to add some OS customization remember we are going to be plugging this in and not have a desktop environment so we won't have access to any type of a de display environment so we're going to want this to when it boots connect to our network automatically and then we're going to SSH into this device and I'll show you how to do that. So we're going to hit edit settings. Um, there's a couple things we want to set. There's some things that are already set here for me but will, may not be set for you. The first thing I want to do is go into services. This will likely be turned off. You want to enable your SSH setting and you want to use password authentication. We're going to set that password here on this screen. So. Um, you can set this username to whatever you want. Just make sure that you remember what it is. And then you're going to put your password in here. I think I just used QWERTY as my password. And then um, we are going to set the host name. If it's uh, checked off by default, just check it on. And make sure it's something that is descriptive of a Raspberry Pi so that when it hits your network, your local network, and it displays its display name, you know exactly which one it is. Um, then you're going to want to configure your wireless settings. So this is your local router, your local wireless settings. That's my SSID. And then I'm going to pat, put in the password here. Okay, and then 
you want to configure your LAN here. So this is my um, my local wireless network, and we're going to put in the password here so that it can access that. Um, here we can select the country that we're in. Not sure how if that really matters or not, but I will put U.S. And then I'll set my local settings as Boise, which is where I am, and U.S. So after that, we are all set. I'm going to hit Save, and it will apply those settings to the SD card. So I'm going to say yes to that. It's going to erase anything that you have and format the card, and I'll say OK to that, and then it's going to go ahead and start writing. You need to put in your prompt here to make to allow that to happen. All right, and there it goes. So it's going to start writing. This process, depending on the card you have and the computer that you have, might take some time. So I will likely speed this up just for the sake of the video. Okay, now for the fun part. So now that we've got our operating system written to this card, we can go ahead and take it out. We're going to put that into the back of the Raspberry Pi. So there's a SD slot right up here. We'll just slide this right in here. There we go. Okay, and that is now loaded and ready to go. Your USB-C power is right here on the side. So we're going to go ahead and plug this in. Okay, and now we just need to give it power. So once you've plugged in your Raspberry Pi, uh, you will see a solid red light, which indicates power, and then you will see a blinking green light, which indicates that the OS is starting to boot up. So hopefully you have some access to your router. I'm going to go ahead and open up my router here and start to look through all of the different devices that are on my network. Now you can see down here there is one Raspberry Pi that was recently online and now we're just going to wait for that to, to, to essentially fire up because it still hasn't hit. It's still working through its boot up process. We're waiting for that to load. So we'll give it a second, click on it here, and we should see this connect here momentarily. Okay, and there it goes. So Raspberry Pi just connected. You can see it's connected to the Office Eero and uh, it's starting to transmit some data. And below here we have an IP address of 192.168.7.239. That's exactly what we needed. And that is how we are going to SSH into the unit here momentarily. Okay, at this point, we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and open a terminal session on your computer. And if you remember, we had to open up, or we had to set a username and password. So what we're gonna do here is we're going to say SSH to open this SSH session. We're gonna use the same username that you used from uh, your configuration settings. And then here we're gonna put in the web address that was assigned to your Raspberry Pi, which I need to look up, 192.168.7.239. Okay, and that should allow us to SSH in. It says, are you, gonna, are you sure you want to continue connecting? We're gonna say yes. Okay, and now we need to use the password that we use, which I think is Q-W-E-R-T-Y for me. Hit enter, and there you go. So now we were in, logged into our um, Raspberry Pi uh, session. Okay, so once we are logged in, the first thing we wanna do is update our Raspberry Pi. So we're going to write in sudo apt update, okay, and that is going to go through and update all of the um, repositories on the Raspberry Pi itself, dependencies. Once that update is done, we are then going to type in the following command, install, and we are going to go out to GitLab and we are going to get build essentials. make okay so that is the next command hopefully you can see that sudo apt install git uh, build essential with a hyphen in between cmake libuv1 dash dev and then libssl dash dev and then libhwloc dash dev. So I hit enter on that, it will go through another process here of updating and it will start to install all this.
Now this takes some time, so I'm going to go ahead and let this run. Again, we'll do a we'll do a screen cut here, but um, I would expect this to take a good three four minutes. Okay, so this has completed, and now we're on to the next step where we are going to put XM Rig on here. So XM Rig is the mining software so we actually have to install that to the raspberry pi is a popular open source mining software for monero we're going to download it and install it uh, essentially clone it directly from the xm git lab um, address which i will type in here so we're going to write in git clone https this is the address for gitlab at github.com slash xm rig slash xm rig dot git okay and i'll leave that up on the screen here for a moment so this will go out to uh, github to the xm rig official site we'll install it to our raspberry pi okay and once that has done that goes very fast we will then uh, change directory and we're going to change to that directory that we just created okay and then we're going to make a new directory oops, called build. Okay, and then we're going to change to that directory that we just made. Okay, and now you can see that we are in uh, the directory that we just created, xmrig build. And here we're going to say cmake dot dot. Okay, it will go through a bunch of stuff here. And then we are going to write um, just the word make. Oops. Okay, and there we go. This will take another couple minutes, and then we will have our Raspberry Pi ready to go. Okay, before we get any further, we're going to need a spot to store the coins that XMRig is going to pay us with. Um, we're going to need a wallet. And so uh, you can get any Monero wallet. Uh, the one I'm going to choose here is My Monero. It's at mymonero.com. You can simply go to this website. So once you have um, Monero installed and you open it up, you'll have your wallet uh, set up. You can click on it and it will have an address here. That is the incoming address to send money into your wallet. So if you click copy or just keep this on the side uh, till we get to the next step. Okay, so we've got our wallet set up. And I'm going to open my terminal again, and we're going to SSH back into um, back into our Raspberry Pi. So I will just put that same command in there. It's going to ask me for my password again. Okay, and once we are in, um, we are going to change the directory back to um, XMRig, and then we're going to change back to the build directory that we had before. And once we're in this directory, we're going to paste in a specific command here which I'll walk through with you. Um, essentially what it's gonna do is it's gonna kick off the XMRig application. It's gonna tell it um, what pool we want to join. And we're gonna designate uh, the address for where to put the money and then we can optionally label uh, our hardware. So we'll walk through this. So it's gonna be, the command is gonna be dot slash XMRig. That's the, the uh, command that's gonna kick off the executable. Dash zero. And then we're gonna put in a pool here, um, a mining pool. Think of it as if you are working together with a lot of other computers to solve these, these different um, jobs. If you were all by yourself, it might take a very long time to, to solve a job. So we pool together with others and um, it gives us a greater chance of solving that pool quicker, but it gives you a smaller amount of the profit because you're splitting it with the rest of the pool. Um, here we're using golf.moneroocean.stream with a colon 10128 is the port number and then a space dash U. So here's where we will paste in our address from our Monero wallet so that it knows where to put any coins that you mine. And then optionally, you can add a dash P and name it anything you want here. Um, this is just really if you had multiple pieces of hardware in your loop uh, and you wanted to assess and look at metrics on each individual one, this will give you uh, an idea and a name so that you can look at and identify what each piece of hardware is. So I'm going to go ahead and enter and you're going to see a bunch of stuff pop up here. Firstly, you'll see a bunch of metrics about the hardware that you're using uh, and then you will see that it is using um, your Monero Ocean Stream with the port that you specified and from there it is going to go into um, mining. So that's pretty much it. It's going to start to look for new jobs and then accept those jobs accordingly and we'll leave this here for a moment and see if we can 
uh, get an example of, of a job where we, we pull it up. And then I will go into the Monero dashboard and see if we can um, look at those jobs. So there are some commands you can run here as well. If you see this uh, under the command section, uh, there is some letters highlighted. If you hit H, it'll show you your hash rate. P will pause your jobs. R will then uh, subsequently resume them. S will show you some of your results and C for your connection. And I'll show you how some of that works here. We need to get a few jobs under our belt before we run some of those. Although we might be able to run the hash rate now. So if I click H, yeah, so it's going to show you your, your hash rate average over 10 seconds, over a minute, and over 15 minutes. And obviously this hasn't been running very long, so it doesn't have metrics for your 60 seconds and 15 minute intervals quite yet. A bunch of new jobs coming in, and then it will show you to the right the uh, pool that you're connected to. And then um, to the right of that it says diff, that's the difficulty of the job, the algorithm that you're using, and then the height associated with it. If I scroll down a little bit, you'll start to see that I um, accepted some jobs. So here it says accepted num job number one. There's a slash, and then that zero are how many jobs have been rejected. So if I continue to scroll down, you'll see that um, multiple jobs have started to get uh, accepted, all the difficulties that are associated with them, and nothing has been rejected so far. And so each one of these jobs uh, I'm gonna go out and work on, and depending on how much effort is put into it from my Raspberry Pi, you will receive a portion of the uh, Monero rewards into your Monero wallet. And so in order to see that, um, if you pull up a web page called MoneroOcean.stream, so what you will see when you first pull this up is um, some metrics here along the top that show the pool hash rates, the um, XMR block effort, how many connect, uh, accounts are connected, how much payments have been made, etc. So if you paste in, in right next to the trash can your wallet address and hit enter, um, it will start to update everything with your um, details. So here you can see on the bottom portion, there's the, in the square, is a P, is Pi 1. That is where we named it, uh, custom named this specific piece of hardware. Again, if you had multiple pieces of hardware, they'd show up here with all sorts of different boxes. This shows for this specific Pi, 81.67 hashes per second. That's our hash rate. You can see how many um, total hashes, how, when the last time it uh, communicated, etc. If we click up on the top, where um, there's the options button. There is the ability to change the threshold of how much you get paid. Over here on the top right is where it's showing you how much is due to you. And by the way, this has been running uh, prior to this, so this is not how much the pool owes me just from now. Um, it gives you an idea down here of where what you should potentially get if you were to run this, which is 0 .0003 XMR per day. Uh, you can change that to a weekly basis or a monthly basis if you were to continue to run with this uh, hardware and this hash rate you would end up with one dollar and 69 cents of xmr in a month over the, the the course of a month is that really worth it uh, when you offset the energy costs from your home computer that's something that you will need to decide um, but i guess you could you know, the current price at the time of this video of XMR is around $160 per share. Um, if that was to go up considerably to something in the level of Bitcoin, then certainly would be worth it over time. So um, really up to you to decide if this is something that, that makes sense uh, on a personal level, given your situation. But this is how you set this up to do its mining. And then you can continue to add Raspberry Pis in the loop using the same method to boost your hash rate and boost the amount of um, average uh, XMR that's returned to you over time.